Uh, so, after a talk about the community, uh, we welcome our next speaker, Vivek. Uh, Vivek will be talking more into technology, I believe, in PyTest and robot, or PyTest versus robot, as the talk suggests. So, a round of applause for Vivek. And Thank you. Please. You hear me? All right, you, everyone hear me all right? Okay, so, uh, yeah, my topic uh, today that I want to discuss is uh, about test frameworks. Uh, how many of you uh, are using PyTest day to day? All right, that's a good crowd. Okay, uh, just so you know, I am one among you. <laughs> and uh, any, any uses of a robot framework? All right. Still, all right. So uh, the context is that uh, we, 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 we use both of them uh, for different applications. So sometimes you are, you are in this uh, paradox as to why do we have to maintain two different ones and should we should you just uh, jump the ship and migrate just to have one framework? Or what is the motivation for that? What do we gain, what do we lose? Or how, how difficult this is? So I, I, wa I wanted to bring out some perspectives uh, that's good to think about. So the agenda will be a small intro to PyTest and robot. Uh, I'll try to cut short the PyTest since most of you are using it, but we'll, let's see. Uh, and then a flow of uh, how a robot test case would look like and how a PyTest test case will look like. And we'll use a very complex test case scenario today to, to, to see how we can use uh, either of these. Uh, and then we discuss uh, migration. Today, ideally you could jump uh, either way, but today I will try to migrate from PyTest to robot with uh, minimal refactoring. And what's the takeaways? What, what, uh, what can we, what can we um, yeah, take home? So this is a word, cl word cloud from PyTest homepage. So what PyTest thinks their framework does is it's, it's scalable and it's easy to write and uh, it's readable and yeah, it's basically an automation framework. So this is basically word cloud from uh, PyTest homepage. Uh, we will see if it is, so this is one from robots, uh, robots homepage. Uh, so they also, so now we can, the idea is to see the similarities. It's also supposed to be extendable and then easily readable and used for multiple application, HMI testing, whatnot. Uh, uh, keyword driven test, which is, uh, yeah, they emphasize on it. Uh, also behavioral driven, uh, almost in the same category. Uh, okay, on the flow, basically if you look at both PyTest and robot, they almost, yeah, uh, uh, stack up in a similar way. Uh, whereas in robot, you have a you have an initialization or a setup stage, and then you act, and then you validate on what happened, and then you tear down everything, go back to the next one. It's it's uh, almost the same uh, strategy from PyTest. Different different uh, terminologies. They call it arrange. Uh, you arrange your setup and then test basically act on it and then assert on what you get, and then you clean up. Clean up, tear down. But essentially, yeah, you can see the similarities. And there are a lot of features, it's a, it's a, it's a notion, but uh, we'll just focus on uh, the key features here. One, in, in robot frameworks, the resource library, and then uh, keywords. Whereas in PyTest, you have uh, fixtures, the amazing fixtures, uh, and plugins. 
So what's, what, what, what does a PyTest fixture do? It basically initializes your test functions. So where does it come in? So it, it basically does your arrange part of your flow. So it, yeah, when you want to start up, in what order you want to initialize, and things like this. This is taken care of by fixture. And uh, there's a link to the PyTest, uh, how to write a fixture and customization and whatnot. You can, uh, it's a good one, I think. You don't need the external documentation. Yeah, plugin, I, I thought hard how to describe a plugin, but it's basically, a, I think it's a cocktail of hooks. It's, it's an extension of hooks. So it can be custom built, and there are also plenty of uh, uh, built in. Uh, today, we will use, uh, we'll try to build a custom fixture, but you try to use a built in uh, plugin. Uh, how to write a plugin is also uh, awesome uh, in Python, Python's uh, official documentation, so you can get the link to that exact page uh, here. All right, uh, now when we come back to robot, uh, as, as I discussed, I think resource library and keywords are two main uh, things they have. So what's, what's a resource library? It's a, it's a, it is a typical Python library, which is a class and a bunch of methods. The, 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 the speciality is that the methods are exposed as keywords. And, uh, and here, they have, a, they have a, decorators are awesome, and robot uses uh, it, both Python also uses it. Here, uh, you can use, easily convert a normal Python method into a robot keyword using this library decorator. Uh, and this is a link to the library API. There are like three different types of APIs, static, dynamic, and hybrid. Today, we will use uh, static for the uh, time constraint that we have. But you can also experiment with the other two types. They work in a similar fashion. Yeah, the keywords. I, 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 I couldn't uh, differentiate it with the test case. Then when I looked into robot, they themselves cannot, because the syntax is exactly the same as a test. Which is, which is good for us. We will see how it is good for us. Uh, it differs only in the section where it is described. Maybe it's a bit vague uh, now, but when I go into the code, you can see what I mean by section. Uh, you, you, you basically define the section as, yeah, this is how it's defined, keyword with uh, three asterisks, <laughs> or no, a number of asterisks, this side and left and right. And they also have a keyword decorator, which is, again, awesome when we, uh, when we want to just convert a normal Python method into a uh, keyword. Uh, again, robot framework also uh, has a good uh, user guide. Personally, I like the Python students better, but, but they, they do try. Uh, so what's the awesome uh, complex scenario we're going to just, we, we, we are basically going to just test the status codes on our na 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 uh, GitHub API and uh, NASA API. Because just, uh, just as I am doing this uh, presentation, I don't want to be hit by an asteroid, uh, which, which is uh, closer to the Earth's orbit. So I want to check that. And then, uh, of course, we need GitHub. If it's going to hit, I have to push the latest code into GitHub before <laughs> it happens. So these are two uh, essential stuff for me. Um, OK, now we'll start with PyTest and uh, write a simple test. So basically, so you import the PyTest library, and you, uh, these, are, these are standard uh, libraries, requests and logging. Uh, and then we basically get a response. We check if the, if the uh, NASA's API is live and kicking. Uh, and then, yeah, we, we, I, I try to force it to uh, force it to, uh, yeah, fail by just checking 404, just for the scenario. But if you look, uh, so this is this is basically just uh, just just a Python method. The only thing Python Pytest emphasizes is, yeah, you import Pytest, and your test have to start with, sorry, your test have to start with, uh, test naming should st start with test. That's yeah, it's a minimal thing to require, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, that's that's how it looks. Let's try to run this and see what happens. Oh, 
Oh, no, I don't get the screen. So should I click again? Can I move? All right, that was intricate. Maybe this is better. So, for now, I will take this away. Let's see what happens. So basically, they have a collection uh, hook. So that's what uh, collects. So it, col it has collected four items that are uh, uh, four test cases in my actual test file. And you see, as expected, uh, the the uh, two failed, two passed. Uh, let's see a bit more closer. Yeah, test that fails. Of course, it should fail. And test using fixture that fail. That should also fail because I'm only asserting on 90 ones. But uh, okay, so it seems to have worked fine, uh, as intended. Now. Let's try to s come back to uh, our PPT. Should I drag the whole thing? All right. And then. There you go. Don't want to start. So we ran that, and now we try to see how it looks by writing it with the fixture. So here, basically, this this is the this is the uh, test structure that I use for this purpose. So you have a PyTest uh, folder, and then underneath that you have uh, I have different account test and uh, test.py, uh, which is our main test case. And in the account test, I have defined my fixtures, basically using the fixture decorator. So if you if you look at uh, the function, they're very very close to what we, what we have here. I've only just decorated it with the PyTest fixture decorator, and yeah. So uh, maybe yeah. So this is the this is the. Uh, this is the way we can easily convert a normal Python method into a, a PyTest uh, fixture. We could try to quickly see how the code looks in. So this is a fixture. Uh, And here's how our test code looks. These are the four test cases which we basically ran. Uh, the emphasis initially was on just test methods, uh, PyTest methods. And this is the this is the how you write a test case with the fixture. So you, you basically pass in your your fixture as an argument to the PyTest method, and then it automatically uh, understands its uh, fixture and in initiates it uh, in an in an order. You can control the order. Uh, there is ability to do that, but essentially left to right by default. So that is that. If we get back, uh, now we have done dealt with the fixture. Now we can uh, try something with the plugin. So as I said uh, today, I will use a custom or a, sorry, a built-in plugin, which is basically. One key differentiator they claim uh, most of the time that's in the discussion is that by default, robot gives you a fancy HTML report, but PyTest doesn't. Fine, but PyTest has plugins, uh, and we will use one of the HTML plugins uh, today. So we run the same test, but so that's how you initiate a plugin. So basically, you you use hooks called add option or whatever. Uh, and then you basically call from a command line, and as soon as uh, it, 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 it checks, uh, it, it hits the plugin, and then it's initiated and it will run. 
So it ran the exact same test, but uh, what it has in addition is uh, yeah, a rip HTML report basically giving you, yeah, two of them passed, two of them failed. Yeah, maybe an executive summary. All right, so we go back. Now, instead of instead of starting to write a robot framework test from from scratch, instead of writing a bunch of classes and methods, what 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 we can try to do today is uh, just to, just to play around with uh, some of the decorators which robot framework offers, and then put them into the pytest and see what happens. Uh, can they work in conjunction? So this is a. Uh, Typical structure of a robot uh, framework code. You have, yeah, this is what I described earlier as sections. So you have settings, you have suits, you can also have, you love, you can also have keywords. Uh, library is, again, basically classic uh, Python, a bunch of classes and methods, but the methods are exposed as uh, keywords. If you intend to use the keywords uh, of the library, so you define it, you just define it here, and then you can basically use them. So now, if, if, if now if we look at a, a bit closer, what are we seeing? We are seeing the test.py and conf test, but these were the test cases or test test files in the pytest library. So basically, we we convert the pytest test file into a robots library, and uh, even conf test. I was not sure if 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 it conf test had something special that <laughs> will it work, but it works uh, as we will see. Uh, so we, I, I basically define something called happy test. It's a, it's a keyword, so it's a it's a user keyword, and then the test basically runs the exact exact same exact same test that we use in pytest. Just that you can ignore you can ignore this uh, underscores and uh, uh, caps and small things here to be. Uh, for it to be more readable for a business analyst or uh, from a requirements perspective. Uh, so, but there's not a single method or a class written extra. Uh, okay. So, what I did is basically make use of their awesome robot API decorator. So, there is a decorator for converting a class into a library, and there is a um, decorator for converting the methods into a keyword. Here, it's a simple one. So there was just methods. So I've used uh, the keyboard, keyword decorator on the method to convert it into uh, convert it into a key, uh, convert it into a robot understandable keyword. And that's why when you come here, it it, it recognizes test that passes test that passes as a as a keyword. But maybe we could try to run that as well. Yeah, a bit more neat, but neat uh, doesn't give much data. <laughs> anyway, so basically the happy test is the name of the test, so it passes. Uh, and the negative test, which is supposed to assert on the negative um, uh, response, it fails, so it works as it should. Maybe one thing we can look at is uh, their reports within robot, and it looks like This basically. So you basically have yeah a summary, two tests, and um, yeah yeah one fail and passed and uh, time and you can you can add in more tags and stuff um, if you like. But basically it's a bit more glossier, I could say. But again, it's just an executive summary. So what's the takeaway? I think in in terms of Pytest, the effort is almost the same as maintaining any other uh, any other Python uh, module or library. And then, what you gain uh, if if you are a, if if you have a if you are a developer, then I think you're more comfortable modularizing 
a PyTest uh, framework. Uh, and then there is a claim that PyTest is 30% more uh, faster in execution time. I haven't run it in an isolated environment for a long time, so I would still say it as a claim. But uh, maybe in some time I will uh, test it out if it stands. Uh, um, and then the loss is that the compl as compl complexity increases, this, this uh, the turnaround time between a business analyst or requirement engineer looking into the requirement and trying to see if the test matches, maybe it could, yeah, he will need to look into a Python code. So it might take some time. So that is uh, that is that. In terms of robot framework, it's a, it's a medium if, if you can get accustomed to this uh, uh, strict spacing and uh, the syntax. The, the more user friendly it is, the more the less developer friendly it is, I, I think. But uh, yeah, if you get used to it, it, it it's, it's medium in my perspective. But what you gain is again readability. The requirement engineers and uh, analysts could easily understand. If you, if you give them the test case, robot test case, yeah, it, they could better understand than a PyTest test case. Uh, loss, I think, again, it, it, if you look at just the test case, it could be a bit, bit hard. Uh, for developers, I mean, uh, I, would, I would still need to go back to the method and check what it's actually doing in the resource library. And execution time, if, if it is 30% uh, is huge. Uh, if uh, exactly, uh, For example, I come from an automotive industry. If you have a test object and you have like 12 hours to run like 1,000 tests, then I mean, it, it makes a difference. So it's something to be investigated, I would say. So you would have the code uh, in my uh, PyCon um, GitHub repo. So um, you could basically uh, play around and build more, break it. You could also try to fixtures. You can build fixtures over fixtures. So you can even see what happens if you just <laughs> play around with that. And then customize your plugins. Uh, yeah, it's, it's fun. Overall, uh, I think if you have a legacy code, then you, you uh, I, I don't see much uh, difference on uh, maintaining one or the other. It depends on the use case, how your organization is structured, how is the requirement uh, engineers and business analysts interacting directly or indirectly, uh, or, and the execution time um, spent on it. So that's my take, and I am Vivek Mohan. I work as a senior software engineer at Roblox Cars Gothenburg. So we just don't build cars, we do build awesome software as well. So, and a big thank you uh, to all my colleagues uh, back in uh, VCC. Uh, uh, my, uh, I work for a group called OTA uh, over there, updates on software for the cars. So, yeah, they keep uh, challenging uh, me every day. So, yeah, and, and to my family. So I had to travel from Gothenburg. So I have two kids, uh, quite young ones. So, yeah, thanks to my family as well for letting me be the geek. Uh, so, yeah, that's all. Thank you. Uh, th uh, thank you, Vivek, for the talk. Uh, it was really nice hearing your perspective about uh, PyTest and report. So, any questions from the audience? Yeah? Hello. Uh, oh. A little bit high. Uh, yeah, so first, uh, nice to see another Gothenburger here. We Thank need you. more representation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, so um, when looking at this, basically, if I understand correctly, the robot specification file is um, not containing the log or any logic itself. It's more like uh, a yeah. specification of what tests to run. That is that true? That's right. It, it, yeah. So this is how this is how a typical robot test case would look like. You you can you can you can have variables defined, mm. but in the sense they 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 it depends on how you structure the test. You can have a bunch of variables defined here and use them here itself, but it becomes it beats the point. So the whole point is to have it readable for the analysts and stuff. So if you insert, you can do that. You can define a variable or a, a, a method and then use it. If the scope is local, then you basically use it here. But 
it beats the point of uh, having to, you can do that, yeah. Mm. And uh, how do you see like the benefit of using robot versus something like BDD where you also have like these high level descriptions? Yeah, to be honest, I haven't used BDD much, but I, I, re I recently started looking into it. It looks quite similar and robot framework actually has, uh, they, they claim it, it has a behavior driven uh, automation framework as well in, in their own homepage. So and, and they, I, I did see some plugins from robot frameworks that basically uh, uh, does this uh, when this that those keywords they incorporate it somehow. So uh, personally, I haven't used B BDD so much, but uh, from the look of it, it, looks similar. And you would say the main benefit is when you have like non-engineers looking at the tests as well. Yes, that's what in in my perspective, that's what I could see the benefit it is, otherwise in the background, it's still, it's still Python code. Okay, Th thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna hog the question time anymore. <laughs> Um, hello, since I'm just a stupid developer and don't understand how those people that want to see this works, would they just accept that I write something that generates this from my PyTests instead? Yeah, they wouldn't know, right? If you do that, I mean, they wouldn't know. <laughs> they, would just, they would still be looking at a file. So they don't know how it was generated, so... Yeah, I mean, you could do I, that, I think. Since I didn't, <laughs> it's a cool idea. I'm just a stupid developer, so I don't know what this helps me with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I think it's a good idea because the most irritative part here is yeah the the strict uh, <laughs> the strictness in the naming and the spacing and uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, yeah, we could do that. I mean, yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Any questions? Uh-huh, uh, maybe we can just... Hey, uh, I was just wondering, like, uh, how would a requirement engineer or an analyst look at this and understand that, okay, this is compliant with it? Because all I see is the name of tests. Uh, so how is, does it work in practice? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm a lazy developer. <laughs> Actually, if if I have to if I have to name it the right way, then I should have named check GitHub API status code. Check or check connectivity with GitHub API. Something like that. you can instead of that you can very well write that, but just it has to be in that nomenclature. So then then the requirement engineer or analyst can look and say, okay, this is a test which is checking for connectivity. And this is looking for, yeah, uh, the content and things like that. So it here robot th that that is robot's uh, trump card, or it gives you this uh, uh, opportunity to name it however you want it. So this is yeah, I just named it for fun. So I should, if I had to stick to the rule, I should have named it yeah, check API status code. So okay. Okay, then I have a question. Uh, why won't uh, they be satisfied with uh, um, pytest.html generated file? Like it, uh, it will have underscores, yes, but uh, are spaces really worth uh, of uh, all this? <laughs> a question I've been asking myself <laughs> a long, long time, but I think, I think. Practically, this is this is a developer's point of view. But in practically, in organizations, what happens? You jump into a legacy code, and that's for some reason in some framework, in some language, and then you try to do the best maintaining it. Uh, that's that's the case. I mean, uh, so so, and if you have built a big organization and your pipelines and the triggers and whatnot to uh, to comply with uh, one particular framework, then the that's. Uh, yeah, they, they find it, usually they find it reluctant. Basically, it's reluctance to jump, which, which, which is what I want to break. Like, 
it, it's not so it's not so islands apart. It's quite quite common. I mean, this is run, being run on 3.11, the latest 3.11 Python. What I run it, and both robot and Pytest runs uh, like a charm. So I, I don't. Uh, you don't need to. Uh, my point is, you don't need to choose one or the other. You can coexist. So. Or you can choose do do a refactoring if you need with uh, minimal effort. Yeah. So with the time constraint, I think.